guys, how's it going? Really quick here. Yes, coffee. Okay. So I'm gonna do something a little different today. Um, we're just gonna kind of chill and kick back and relax. I've always wanted to do one of these, but I've got a little bit of a story time video for you. I'm gonna kind of put a disclaimer here before I start. Uh, this is a video that does talk about Christianity. I am absolutely a Christian and um, I understand that might be a touchy subject, but if you want to click away, I absolutely understand. I really want to encourage you to stick with me, um, only because this is the kind of story that, you know, could be for anyone, um, specifically for like people starting out in college. Um, also, it's a story for any Christians out there that are watching that uh, may have heard of this before and uh, how to kind of be wary if this ever comes up to you as a situation. Well, I hope you guys have a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, or something, because we're going to be here for a little bit. Got quite a um, this is something that happened um, probably about five or six years ago. It started in the spring of 2014 and ended in the spring of 2015, so about a span of a year. I'm going to start from the beginning and kind of tell you a little bit about my faith. Um, so when I was about 11 is when I really started getting into church. Um, I had, as a kid, I had always believed in God. I've always believed that there was a God. Like, I don't think there was any time in my life I didn't believe in God. My parents were Christians. And so, um, you know, when I was 11, we really started as a family, um, as we to um, a church here in Missouri that I honestly can't remember where it's at. We went there for a couple of years and then honestly we kind of fell off a little bit. And then my dad and I started to go to a church like right by our house. So uh, we went on and off for a little bit and then finally like the whole family started going and we were... I mean, heavily, heavily involved in church. We were going every Wednesday night, every Sunday morning, Sunday night. I got involved in all the events. My mom and I were volunteering for BBS. I was going on to like the youth groups as like retreats every year and all kinds of different stuff. Like it, it was a big deal. It wasn't until about when I was 17, I believe, is when I really got saved. Um, I was doing a a sociology project for my sociology class and one of the projects was to tell of like pivotal points of your life moments that changed your life kind of thing and I definitely wanted to put when I was saved and I couldn't remember when I had been saved so I was kind of upset and kind of confused about it so I went to my mom and I suddenly remember like I understand salvation I understand how it works it totally makes sense to me but I just, I don't remember actually being saved. I don't remember saying the words like, you know, I believe Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose three days later. I never made that action, I don't think. She got out her Bible and we basically just prayed and she, we went through like John 3, 16, other kind of verses, prayed and prayed to God. And then I made that commitment to Christ right then and there. And it changed my life. It, it, immediately I felt God's spirit within me and he just, he fulfilled me and it was a life changing moment. I'm sure if you've ever um, been saved, if you're a Christian, you know exactly what I'm talking about with that feeling. And so, um, you know, from then on, I kind of was just a little church girl. I basically, all I cared about was church. All I cared about was Christian music, Christian books, Christian TV, Christian movies. Like I was a little bit obsessed in a weird way. I was really building my relationship with God and really getting deep and and really just committing my life to Christ. And so I graduated high school. Uh, we were living North Missouri and then we moved down South Missouri like literally the day after I graduated high school. And so um, that was like when I became an adult and at the time we, we just moved so we were trying to find a good church home. You know, I started working and I always worked on a Sunday so that was hard to go to church. And as time progressed, my, my, my faith never went away but I just kind of backslid a little bit and I was very, very on and off. Very, I would be really great with God and really in the Word, really on fire and then I would just be meh. About the next few years, I really struggled with that back and forth, back and forth. And fast forward, probably about 2014. Um, at this time, my family and I had moved to Colorado. My dad got transferred through his job. And um, at this time specifically, I had moved out 
of my parents' house to Denver, going to college, right in the heart of downtown Denver. And I was loving it. I was loving finally having a college life and really getting involved and stuff. I really wanted to like make some friends and really meet new people. And probably about the spring of 2014, um, had this like campus event, which was called Spring Fling. And basically all like the student organizations of the school would like go out, they have tables and they would just have people stand there and tell about the club, about their event or whatever. And they would hand out pa pamphlets and whatnot. So um, I dig these kinds of things. So I definitely went to it because i that's exactly what I was looking for at the time. I was looking to get involved in a group or a club or something just to kind of bide my time. Because I remember I was walking down like the little walkway and I got stopped by this really sweet girl. Uh, we're going to call her Erica. Um, I'm not going to use real names here, but um, she was a sweet little blonde girl and she was, she was really, she was so adorable. Like, I don't know if any of these people I'm going to talk about were genuine or not. You know, maybe they were and I just don't know for sure, but um, I got stopped by her. And she was like, hey, you should totally come check out our club. I, I saw the name of it and it said Christian. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> there it is. Like, that's exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a, a club, the, a Christian club to really, you know, help me get back into faith and really get plugged in. That's exactly what I was looking for. And so, um... I was like, yeah, like I would totally love to learn more. And she started kind of giving me a little bit of a rundown of what the club was about, what they believe in, you know. And I was told by several people at this table that they were strict by the Bible. They don't tear away from the Bible. The Bible is the absolute truth, and that's what they go by. And I was like, that's that's exactly right. The Bible is the truth. This is what you go by. And so I was like, all right, I'm in like, you know, and so, um, it so happened that night they were having a, um, what's called a Devo night or a devotional night, which is basically like a game night and you go and, um, there's an auditorium in our student union. We played like dodgeball or something. I, I can't remember what we played, but, uh, I really, really liked it, and all these people were so nice. They came up to me and they were like, hey, who are you? You're new, let's be friends, let me get your number. You're so great, blah, blah, blah. Really liking all the, honestly, was kind of liking the attention, not gonna lie, uh, but I was really liking how nice these people were, and like, at the time, this didn't freak me out. Not thinking about it, it was kind of crazy because this was love bombing, and that's kind of like, a cult like feature you know and I was really liking this whole deal and I was like you know I think this is what I'm looking for I think this is God's calling me here I forgot to mention that uh, Church of Christ was the church they were backed by which was a branch I believe of the ICOC or the International Church of Christ you probably have heard those before uh, there's another one that's like it which is called the ICC and they are the International Community Church they're pretty much the same thing, just with a different name. So, you know, I kind of did a little bit of research after I went to the Devo night, but very surface level. Like, I didn't dig deep or anything. I wish I would have, and you'll find out in the story later. But, um, you know, I was really, uh, I was really kind of elated about this whole thing. I was like, this is awesome. Like, I definitely want to keep coming back, and so I did. Just to kind of give you a quick rundown of how, like, this church was ran and how it went basically was um, they had very various events specifically to the branch I was going the club I was going to they had Wednesday nights which was midweek which was basically like your run-of-the-mill like youth group night where you go and you listen to like a leader preach the word about something or you know it's like a little meeting and and then, um, you know, of course, we have Sunday morning church like normal or a Sunday night church like normal. And then, like, throughout the week, um, we'd have um, what's called Bible talks, which is basically we'd be in the student union in the cafeteria and we'd have a Bible talk leader and they would basically talk about a, a scripture, a verse, and then everybody in a circle would go around and share how they felt about the verse or what they think. And um, of course, Friday night was Devo night, which was like fun game night. Um, so that was kind of just like your basic, this is what we did. 
Um, there were two leaders. There was, um, I'm going to say Jessica and Mark is what I'm going to call them. Uh, Jessica was the women's leader, and then her husband, Mark, was the men's leader. Both of them together, they would basically were responsible for us, all of the events, the midweeks, all kinds of stuff. Um, and so um, Mark would always lead like the the sermons on midweek on Wednesday nights. So um, yeah, that was kind of a basic rundown. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff. I started kind of going to midweeks and started to get a feel for how this whole organization worked and what they were all about. And I really liked it. And I was like, this is awesome. I think it was all sunshine and rainbows and all kinds of stuff. So um, I was then approached by a girl named call her Rochelle. <laughs> uh, Rochelle was a really sweet country girl. You could tell she was um, raised in the church, very Christian, God-like minded girl. Um, seemed very sweet, loved to hang out with her. She had a very um, energetic vibe and I like those kinds of people and I just, I wanted to hang out with her all the time. And she was best friends with Erica, the girl I originally met when I originally was introduced. And she had another friend named um, Tara, let's call her. Um, Tara was a quiet little country, uh, also like a country girl, but she was into horses and you could tell she was very timid and, um, you know, uh, both all three of them, Erica, Tara, and Rochelle were all friends and they all hung out together. And so, um, I believe Tara came up to me and said, Hey, you know, you're really great. I really like you. You should come study the Bible with us. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'd love to do a Bible study. I've done, um, I've grown up as a Baptist. And if you're a Baptist, you definitely know that, like, a lot of Baptist churches do, like, um, weekly Bible studies for, like, a youth group or a women's group. Like, I've been to so many of those. And um, so I, I was like, yeah, definitely. I would love to come and study the Bible with you. I thought this was a very innocent getting to know people type of Bible study, and I was very wrong. Um, when I showed up to the, the actual Bible study, I think we met at a Starbucks, and uh, it was basically like an introduction to like Christian faith and like salvation, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, I was kind of confused at first. I was like, you know, I don't mean to like be rude or anything here, but I just, I want you to know that I, I'll, I'll definitely do this study with you guys. And like, this is a great way to like, recommit my life to God because that's definitely what I'm seeking but you know I'm not here to like proclaim my faith or become saved because I've already done this like I don't need to do it again you know they were very like yeah yeah definitely but I <laughs> I had the feeling that they just didn't get it or they were ignoring me about it because they were just like well yeah you know you still need to do this study and I'm just kind of like okay <laughs> like you know like it, but it wasn't it wasn't like you have to do this study, we have to do this. It was just more like a, let's just do this study together, blah, blah. Basically, um, I did this study and um, I realized that, I later realized that you had to do this study uh, in order to get baptized and in order to do more cool things into this club. And um, like, maybe it's because I was in a sorority at the time, but it felt like I had to go through initiation to become like a member. And it just really, like, that really kind of was, like, my red flag. I was just like, that's just kind of weird. Like, why do I have to go through this study in order to, like, become a member? But at the time, I didn't really think anything of it. Like, they were a non-denominational church, so I just thought maybe this is just how they do things. This is how they roll, you know? No big deal. I went through, it's about an eight-week study, and I honestly can't remember all the, the different steps and stuff. I, you're in a group of girls we get together, they come over to my apartment mostly, and if you're at all familiar with the ICOC, you have maybe heard of this study, um, but there is particularly one part which is called the SIN study, and I think it's about like week six or seven or something. I remember um, like the week before we did the SIN study, the girls were telling me, hey, you need to, what you need to do for a little bit of homework is you need to get out a piece of paper and you need to write down all of your SINs like everything and uh even like the deep stuff and all that kind of stuff and I was honestly I was kind of like 
weirded out by that in a, in a, in a very small way. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be rude or anything. I got this weird feeling like, I don't think I really trust these girls. Or at least I didn't like trust, I felt like I didn't trust them at the time. Like, cause I don't know you yet. And then maybe I'll trust, I'll get to know you better and we'll have a little bit more trust where I can share my whole life story with you. But like, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable like letting them into the deep parts of my life. I mean, I don't have very many skeletons in my closet. I've had a pretty much normal life, you know? I mean, I've dealt with anxiety and depression as a teenager and that kind of deep stuff, but like nothing serious, nothing to be worried about. And so, I mean, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, but at the same time, I just like, I was like, I don't know these girls. Like, I don't feel comfortable opening up my diary in front of them, basically. To be honest, I was kind of very uh, vague and very surface level with them during the study, and I think that was the best thing I ever did in this whole situation, because I, I, I just didn't trust them. I, for some reason, I had this weird feeling, and you know when you get a feeling, you go with it. So, finish this study, um, and then it comes down, it comes time for my baptism. Now, I've been, before this, I was baptized at least twice in my life. I was baptized at 11 when my family and I were going to church. Um, and then I think I was baptized again when we started going to our hometown church when I was in high school. And it was so weird because I was like, I don't really get why I have to do a baptism because I've done this act before. I've proclaimed my faith. I've proclaimed my belief in Jesus. You know, it felt weird that I had, not like I had to do this, but I felt weird that this is what this is, this is how this was going. But you know, what was really weird is the whole situation um, and I'm just gonna kind of be honest in my opinion here. I felt like the whole um, baptism situation was basically like good for us, you know, like the leaders of church that we were attending and all the pastors or priests or whatever there. They, it was kind of like a, they got baptized. I mean, it was just, it, I, I feel like it was, it was mostly for show. And this was like anybody that got baptized in this group. I remember like, Almost every midweek I went to, it was like, so and so got baptized. <laughs> and hoop and holler. And so and so got baptized. <laughs> hoop and holler. You know, it was like a big deal, you know? And like, it seemed great at the time. And like, at, you know, I thought, this is awesome. Like, all these people are coming to Christ. Like, I got these brothers and sisters with me and we're all together, you know? And it's just, you know, but at the time of my baptism, it just felt how they helped me become baptized and how they could help me become saved and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, that's not true. Like, I just went through a study and I'm just getting baptized. Like, this is, I mean, it means something. Don't get me wrong. But it, like, it doesn't mean something because I've already done this. I started getting into more of, like, the events and the more, um, like, we'd go on, like, there was this thing called like a double date thing where you could go with you and another Christian girl. You go hang out with a Christian brother. Like you have a Christian brother, your friend has a Christian brother, brother and you guys go and like go bowling. You go play board games. The, only, the one and only one I went to is where we went to somebody's house and we like cooked dinner and then hung out and played like Never Have I Ever or something like like a clean version of Never Have I Ever. And um, you know, the only way to like get to go do those kinds of things was like to be baptized and to go through this study. And I was just like, that's so weird. But like at the time, none of this was like alarming to me. Like I, I like had it in the back of my mind of like, yes, this is weird. I don't understand this, but this is just how they do things. They're different. At this time, this is probably where it gets good in the story um, is where I was assigned a discipler. Now, if you know anything about the ICOC, you know that any kind of new Christian that comes into the group are assigned a discipler. Now, a discipler is basically a mentor, somebody that you can go to to pray for you, encourage you, um, you're having trouble, if you're struggling in your walk that particular week, or if you, you know, you just want to just talk about anything really. I later found out this was basically someone to keep tabs on you in a weird way. And um, let's call her Emma. Um, Emma was really cool. She was very kickback. She just kind of didn't really give a care in the world. And she used to hang out with Nikki a lot. And her and Nikki were like 
besties and so I kind of started um, hanging out with their crowd a lot. It was basically like the honeymoon period. I was having so much fun. I was meeting all these different people. You know, I was really, I felt like I was on top of the world with this group. And so um, I think when it all really came crashing down <laughs> um, was when I attended um, my Bible study leader's wedding. Now this wedding was I think in the winter of 2014 on to 2015 and um, I was personally invited by her because she was my Bible study leader and um, I was really excited for this wedding because like I don't go to very many weddings like it was probably my fourth wedding of my life that I went to and uh, I was really excited for her I was really excited for you know her the man she was marrying and stuff and it was it was awesome but um when I got to this wedding it kind of changed <laughs> um nothing bad happened and you know I'm gonna say this that I don't know the details of this wedding I was not in any kind of planning process I didn't know the girl's family I didn't even really know the groom that well so like I have no idea what really went down behind the scenes this entire wedding was completely organized and ordained by the church like when I mean when I say that I mean like the our women's leader she was completely responsible for the, like the bride side of the entire wedding and she was like you could see her with a little clipboard walking around making sure everything's all in place everything's going as planned and the, our our men's leader he like married the two of them and then I later found out Bible study leader had only known like the man she was marrying for like six months maybe uh, maybe it was longer I really don't know but it wasn't very long and I'm like that's kind of weird okay like like maybe it's not weird because a lot of people just kind of do like a shotgun wedding it's not a big deal but like in a church kind of setting it is kind of weird it's the grooms like groomsmen were all his buddies from the church and the bride uh, my bible study leader it was like her sister was a maid of honor but her sister was already in the church with us and then all the rest of the girls as her bridesmaids were like girls from the church it seemed like there was this entire production of the church to make sure this wedding happened and I can tell you like the the this was not the only wedding that happened like I, I definitely didn't attend any other weddings in this church but this was like it seemed right after her wedding it was like boom and other people are getting married and other people are getting married and other people are getting engaged it was just like it seemed like everybody was right and left right and left getting fucking engaged whole entire congregation was in attendance for this wedding and I'm just sitting here thinking where are the bride and groom's family where are their parents where are their siblings that they have any like if I had an entire my entire wedding planned by this church that would not fly with my parents they'd be so upset you know I it just it seems so weird to me and like I said I don't know exactly how it was planned if this really was it but it just seemed that way and it felt that way and then even later I found out um, this is kind of a side thing but I later found out that like it wasn't really told to me but it was basically understood that you can't marry outside of the church um, that you have to consult like the leaders and you have to consult your disciple or if you decide to date somebody outside of the church definitely a cult like feature <laughs> not a good thing so um, that happened and then I think when it all ended and where it gets good <laughs> one day I got a call from my mom and uh, we were just talking you know and she and she and my family had been going into this church in um, a Baptist church in like a suburb of Colorado um, and she was starting like a, a woman's Bible study um, my mom invited me I was like heck yeah I'm so there like I would love to do a Bible study with my mom like we could spend time together and we can spend time together with God you know it's perfect so um, I started to do that but the problem was is that the Bible study was on a Wednesday night, which was also the same night as midweek. I was getting ready to go to the Bible study and I got a text from uh, Rochelle, uh, the friend, like the energetic friend that I told you about. She uh, she was like, hey girl, can't wait to see you at midweek tonight. And I was like, 
actually, girl, I'm not going to be there. Like, I'm going to go to a Bible study that my mom invited me to at her church. And literally, without hesitation, the last thing, the next thing she texted me was, aren't you going to struggle if you go there, if you do that? <laughs> I didn't know what to say to that at first. But uh, I was really confused the first time I read that. And I think I texted her back and I wasn't, I wasn't rude to her, but I was kind of short and I was kind of like, why would you think I would struggle if I went there? Like this is my family's church that they're going to. They're Baptist. They believe in Jesus. We're going to go to a Bible study. Like why, why would I struggle if I did that? That makes no sense. You know, I, if I was after that, she then texted me, um, well, I really think that you should talk to your discipler about it. Now I was definitely pissed off. First of all, I'm an adult. If I would like to go do something, that's my prerogative. I, I, I'm grown up. I don't need a little 18 year old to tell me what to do. And number two, why do I have to now have a meeting with my discipler basically go answer to people about me making a decision to go to a different church to another Bible study. This makes no sense. And like, I honestly felt like I had done something wrong. I was in trouble and I had to go talk to my mom about it now. Finally, the day came and um, I had a meeting with my discipler, with Emma. And I, I basically came in with kind of an attitude. I mean, I wasn't really showing my ass or anything like that, but I, I was kind of like, I don't get the point of me doing this. Why am I here? And um, <laughs> basically she gave me, I'm, I'm, I don't remember verbatim what she said, but basically the rundown of what she told me was how I needed to consult her and the leaders about those kinds of decisions. Um, I need to basically, you know, commit to one church and one church only. Again, I'm paraphrasing all this. Um, you know, I need to really pray to God and figure out where I really want to be planted and yada, yada, yada. And then she tried to sh justify it all with some verses and yada, yada, yada. Where I go to church is not determined by people. It's determined by where God wants me to be. And so I really had a problem with that. And it just didn't make any sense. And like, why do I have to, as a grown adult, go by the decisions of these leaders and you to tell me where I should go? Like that's up to me and it certainly is up to God. It really started to just really put a bad taste in my mouth. And then finally, she said this, and I'm going to paraphrase the best I can, but she basically said that in so many words that me making a decision to basically leave or not continue to stay plugged into this church, how does she not know that I'm going to fall away, or I'm going to leave God, and she's not going to be facing damnation? I'm going to say this right now, but your salvation, anyone's salvation in this world is never, ever, ever going to be dependent on someone else's actions, ever, ever. Your salvation is solely based, as it is in the Bible, your decision, your commitment, your you're saying out of your mouth or in your head or your prayer that you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later. That's your salvation. You know, you are not going to go. You are not going to go to hell and you're not going to face damnation if so-and-so can't make it to church or so -and -so, you can't keep this person around or this person decides to leave the church or you decide to go to a different Bible study. That has nothing absolutely freaking nothing to do with your salvation at this point I was I was livid I wanted to leave right then and there I was like this is wrong you have no idea how misconstrued you are and I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt and thinking maybe I heard her wrong 
am I really hearing this? Like, did she really just say that? She's gonna go to hell because I'm deciding to leave this church. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, and I just, I, I think I was just so shocked. And um, I think, <laughs> I think I wanted to get her goat. And I basically said, can you, can you write that down for me so I can like understand a little bit better Then maybe put some verses to back that up. And I knew I was, I knew I was like calling her bluff because she couldn't really like write it down. I'm like, exactly, because you're wrong. How in the world are you going to face damnation if I decide to go to a Bible study? That makes no complete sense. I, I was just like, I, I couldn't even speak. I was so upset. So, um, it so happened that that night, I w it was a Devo night, and I did go out of sheer obligation, and I even think I left early because I was just like, F this, I'm done. I am so completely done. I have never been so, like, betrayed in my life. Like, I've, I've been lied to. I was told by several, not just the people that were tabling at the beginning, but just throughout my entire time were totally we're so by the bible we are just we are strict about the bible the bible is our truth hell no you need to reread it and figure it back out because it ain't right to you apparently i just went home and i was out of sheer frustration just like crying i was so upset i was so frustrated and i just i felt betrayed i felt lied to i felt like I had gotten myself into something really bad and I was just, I had all these thoughts just like in my head, like what did I do? I decided to text a friend of mine and we're gonna call this friend um, Christina, let's just call her that. Um, I met Christina at my baptism. After I was baptized, a bunch of us, my friends, the other people, we went out like for Froyo afterward and I met this girl named Christina and um, she seemed really sweet and really genuine. She was just, she was very high energetic and kind of eccentric and I loved her for that. And, but um, uh, Christina uh, was, she was at my baptism, but I had never seen her at like midweek or anything before. And she came very off and on. And I remember this one midweek she came and we were all like doing like around the circle talk about a verse kind of thing. And she was kind of like giving her testimony at one point, I think. And I soon realized that she was actually going to the church that my mom was having that Bible study at that my parents were going to. And so um, I, at this point, like I had not seen her in a long time. I hadn't really talked to her. And I just took a leap of faith and I texted her and I said, hey, Christina, I I had a really weird, I know this seems really weird, this seems really strange, and I don't mean to like ruffle any feathers or anything. This really weird thing happened, and I know that you've been to the, the times, but you go to this church now. You know, I just I was just kind of wanting to ask you a really weird question. And she called me like immediately after. She was like, hey girl, yeah, what's up? Totally, yeah, you can talk to me. And I, I was like, oh, thank God, I hope she's, like a genuine person because I just, I needed somebody to talk to because I was really freaked out. And so I told her the whole situation. I told her like, you know, I just, I don't understand why, you know, Emma would have told me that because that's, from my understanding, what I've always known it is that your salvation is not dependent on what anyone else does. And she's like, you're absolutely right. And she like agreed with me and I was just like, thank God, someone understands, I can talk to somebody about this, like I'm not alone here. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you what Christina told me happened to her, cause that's her story and nothing crazy. She was never hurt, nobody ever hurt her or anything. I wanna make that little note there. But there were some things that she told me that happened to her that were just really not right, not okay, and just kind of weird, you know? And so, um, I think the next thing that she said to me was, you know, you girl, you got to go on the internet. These people are a cult. This whole thing is a cult. Like, go on Google, girl. There's like article after article after article about how they're on a cult watch. There's like a 2020 investigation on there. All this kinds of stuff. Like, you got to do your research. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? This is a cult? Holy shit. <laughs> like, I was freaking out. Like, I was like, wow. So, um, I think after I hung up with her, um, I, sure as hell, I went on Google and she was right. I found literally 20 
to 25 articles about how these people are cult, how the signs that they're a cult, how they operate as a cult, how they have the cult-like features and all kinds of stuff. And sure as hell, I found the 2020 investigation on YouTube and I watched the whole 20 minute thing about how they went undercover and they had an undercover person go to a meeting with an ICOC person, member, or whatever, and just all these crazy things and I think from that point that was the moment I was like I gotta go I'm just I'm not gonna talk to them anymore I'm gonna just figure out what my next move is gonna be because I definitely don't want to go there um, and I think like the next day I called my parents and I kind of gave them a rundown saying like hey I'm don't know why I'm calling you about this but you know I just I think I'm gonna leave this church because I'm really upset and I'm really freaked out and I just you know want to talk to you about it, want to tell you about it in case something weird happens. My first thought, like, because if you read about cults, cults are scary. Cults are not, definitely not a good thing. And they're, they're creepy. And like, if someone decides to leave a cult, you don't know what can happen. And so my, my first thought to make the decision to leave this group was what's going to happen? Like, are they, I don't think they're capable of hurting me. They never hurt me before. And I never had anything really crazy happen to me. But, like, now that I'm deciding to leave, are they going to decide to do something crazy? Are they going to try to hurt me? Are they going to try to hurt people around me? Like, I had all these, like, insane thoughts of, like, what's going to go down. I My original plan was to kind of, like, phase out just bit by bit. Like, I maybe I'd start attending less and less. I just kind of slowly, like, disappear. And <laughs> I think my, my dad did his research or something and him and my mom called me a couple days later and says, I, we don't give a shit that you're done with this group. Just cut complete ties with them, have nothing to do with them. Like don't even go to any of their events anymore. Don't talk to these people, unfriend everybody on Facebook. And I did just that. I ghosted everybody. Um, I, un I one by one went through the list of all my friends that were associated with this group. Unfriend, unfriend unfriend I just one by one and uh, I definitely got um, I definitely got a bunch of messages a bunch of calls I got a very very rude message uh, Facebook messenger from my discipler Emma saying like what the hell I was doing why are you not answering me what you're doing is very Christ-like and blah 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 all this kind of crazy stuff and I was like I don't give a shit like just leave me alone I don't even think I really like read the whole thing I was just like delete bye unfriend bye I was so done um I think God got me out of this situation at the best time in my life because at the, at the right time because you know who knows what it could have turned into who knows maybe that was just like the beginning stages of all this kind of stuff and if I would have stayed who would have known how bad it could have gotten I mean who knows I didn't hear anything from them after that it was immediate shutting like if I I know I saw a couple of people on campus walking around and they acted like I'd never existed they just walked past me and I mean that, that was great because I, I I was so freaked out that they were going to be pounding on my door or, or blowing up my phone and stalking me or something. Like I was kind of nervous and so I, I mean it sucked to be like shunned by these people. And you know what? Now I think about it that's like that's a telltale sign that they're a cult. If they are shunning me out and treating me like shit because I decided to leave their church. That's unchristlike. You're telling me I'm unchristlike. You, you, so and so, Alex, from midweek that I saw and had a conversation with, is now looking the other way from me. Like that's, you know, confirms my suspicions even further. You know, so um, and then I think after that too, like it was, um, I was actually getting ready to move to back here to Missouri from Colorado. And it was like my last week on campus, like last week of school. And I was approached by a member of the ICC, which like I said before, is basically a, a sister. It's basically the same thing as ICOC, but just with a different name. And they were like, hey, come to our girls night. Come to our girls. And I was like, nope. I'm good. I, I was very nice and I was very polite about it. And I was just like, no, thank you. Like, I'm getting ready to move. And they're like, oh, come anyway. And I was like, no, it's just really not for me right now. I have a lot to do or whatever I said. But I basically was just like, 
Not that again. No, no, I just got out of a very bad relationship with my last church, which is the ICOC. I don't want to join your ICC. I'm done. <laughs> like, it was, it was kind of funny. But, um, you know, in the end, I had never heard another word from any of those other people. And to this day, I have not heard a word from any of that. It's like I never was there. Like, they never knew me. So, you know, I, just, I really wanted to tell this story because, I mean, if you've ever, if you go through YouTube, you can find story after story of ICOC. I've, I've seen a couple of those videos myself. And, you know, that a lot more people are coming out and speaking and saying how ICOC is a cult or their bad experiences of their time in the ICOC. Now, I, I don't want to judge these people. That's not what I'm about. And you know what? I don't think that every single person in this group had a hidden agenda or was out to hurt me or out to be, you know, controlling or manipulative or whatever. I mean, some people definitely were. I think the leaders definitely were a part of this cult-like deal that was going on. But, you know, I don't, I don't, think badly about these people. I don't think badly about my time because it was a really great time um, besides the bad stuff, you know? And honestly, like it helped my relationship with God and it wasn't completely bad and I never was ever hurt. I never did anything crazy. You know, I really pray for these people because I, these are kids. These were like college kids that I met, kids that were my age and younger. They were just starting out college and like they're being fed these lies by perhaps the leaders who knows by this by this whole organization you know and that they're being told false doctrine they're being told false things and I just I pray for them and I want to encourage you guys to pray for them as well if you pray and that they're led to the truth and that they're led to what the Bible actually tells you. And I don't know anything about the ICOC as a whole. So you know, I'm not going to judge the entire organization saying that it's all bad or they all have got a hidden agenda or they are a cult. I don't know that for sure. And like I said, the, the articles I read never specifically deemed them as a cult. They just said they were cult-like and they were on a cult watch. The, a light word that I'm using here because it's not specifically what they are labeled and you know maybe this was just a bad branch that I attended and maybe the ICOC the whole is not that bad I don't know any of that kind of thing the only thing I do know is that I was told lies I was betrayed I was told false doctrine and I did not want to be a part of it and um, I'm really glad that I left and you know, I, I wanted to tell this story to basically, you know, warn you if you've ever been approached by an I, ICOC member or you know, you've ever been in a situation like this, like it's definitely something to be wary of and it's something to really do your research and really, um, you know, think about it before you get into it because you know, it, it very well could not be the thing for you. Um, and it very well was not the thing for me. So um, I'm going to stop talking now because I think I'm losing my voice and I've been talking for an hour now. But I hope you guys really like this video. I hope this kind of gave you an insight to um, these kinds of situations. Thank you for letting me share my story. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a really great day. And I will see you guys on my next vlog or my next blog post. Bye guys. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.